Today I'm going to show you how to make adrenochrome. Adrenochrome. Adrenochrome is a controversial substance that led to many conspiracy theories. So, what even is adrenochrome? Adrenochrome is this funky looking molecule. Due to popular culture, some people think that this compound is a very strong psychedelic. What is this shit? That stuff makes pure mescaline seem like ginger beer, man. Ginger beer? No, trace the cone, put you straight behind bars. <laughs> the second reason for adrenochrome's popularity is that rich people apparently extract it from tortured children in order to look younger and live longer. So many people talked about this conspiracy that it even made it to major news outlets. I believe that Jesse was tortured for the drug adrenochrome. Adrenochrome is a chemical that our body produces when we are extremely fearful. With all of the mysteries surrounding adrenochrome, it would be fun to try to make some. So to make adrenochrome, I bought 50 liters of premium quality tortured African orphan children blood and let's go. <laughs> okay, actually, I'm gonna use something else. For the reaction, I will need a fancy oxidizing agent called silver oxide, and as I don't have any, I'll make it myself. I weighed out 8.5 grams of silver nitrate and dissolved it in distilled water. With sodium hydroxide, silver nitrate can easily be converted to the oxide, and I weighed out 4 grams of it. If I add the solid sodium hydroxide to the silver nitrate solution, it may get covered with silver oxide and the reaction won't be as efficient, therefore I dissolved it. Don't forget the most important part, a dirty stirfish for the catalytic properties. When silver nitrate reacts with sodium hydroxide, it instantly forms this nasty looking brown silver oxide. I added more dihydrogen monoxide and stirred the reaction for 2 hours to ensure that all the silver nitrate gets destroyed. To get rid of formed sodium nitrate and leftover sodium hydroxide, I decanted off the water and washed several times with distilled water until the pH was neutral. I filtered it off using a vacuum filtration which eliminates most of the water. But as I'm way too lazy to wait for it to dry naturally, I ended up washing it with acetone. And there you go, I made chemical grade, very expensive dirt. And with this dirt, I can finally try to make adrenochrome. I added 14 milliliters of methanol to this round bottom flask. And then I added 0.27 milliliters of 99% formic acid. And instead of the blood of tortured children, I'm going to use adrenaline. The only true part about the adrenochrome myth is likely that being tortured actually increases the adrenaline release in your body. I added the adrenaline to the methanol solution and then weighed out 2 grams of the expensive dirt I made earlier. I added the dirt to the flask and if you look closely you can see that the solution immediately turned red. Adrenochrome actually looks like blood. Maybe we can also do the reverse and synthesize tortured children from this substance. The reaction taking place is the following. Adrenochrome first gets oxidized to adrenoquinone and then gets oxidized a second time to form the final product adrenochrome. To isolate the product, I put the flask into a box filled with ice. Three hours later. As it cooled down, the red magic powder crashed out. I decanted off the remaining blood and put the flask into a desiccator. I evacuated it, let it stand overnight and the next day I was left with this black powder. In the end I got 215 milligrams, which is a 44% yield. I filled the powder into this fancy vial and closed it up using a special tool. And there you go, I obtained torture and child free adrenochrome, which I can use to live forever. When you add water to the solid adrenochrome, it looks like blood again. There you go, now you know how to make blood and torture free adrenochrome. I really hope you enjoyed, see you in the next video, bye. A big thanks goes out to all of my Patreons. Without you guys, all of this wouldn't be possible, so thanks for that.